A natural med isn't just a substance you take. It is a lifestyle that one lives to amplify their health. We don't always choose how long we will be on this planet, but we can take action on the quality of life that we wish to enjoy. The Natural Med Podcast interviews different professionals and experts who look at improving the quality of health so they can live a more fulfilling life. Whether that be physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, or spiritually, we discover the secrets to their own journey and the small steps individuals can take on a daily basis to improve the quality of their life. Come with me as we travel, research, and discover how we can make incremental changes on a daily basis to live a more fulfilled and balanced life. Hey there, folks. Welcome back to another episode of the Natural Med Podcast. I am Nathan. As always, I am joined by the star of the show, Nicole Wright. (laughs) Hey. <laughs> and uh, we are super excited today because we have a very special guest, and I will let her introduce herself. Hi, I'm Martha Velez, and I'm with Oak Cliff Cultivators. So welcome, Martha, to the podcast. Thank you. um You're the owner of Oak Cliff Cultivators. We're super excited to have you on our podcast. Of course, we uh, sell your products, your flour, um, your tinctures and everything. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started with um, hemp and CBD. Perfect. Yeah. So my name is Martha Velez, like I mentioned, and my husband and I both own Oak Cliff Cultivators. We are a small boutique hemp farm here in the great state of Texas. We actually are one of the first 100 farmers to get our licensing here when um, hemp legalized in September of 2019. And uh, farmers were able to actually start growing in Texas in May of 2020 um, due to licensing and whatnot. We had to kind of wait. And of course, everybody knows 2020 was a big thing. So it's very interesting that my husband and I both quit our jobs. His last day was March 6th of 2020. And then everything shut down, which was really interesting. But at the same time, it was somewhat beneficial because it allowed us to really just focus on the farm. And all we did was hang out at the farm during the whole time that everything was shut down. We got to really build those greenhouses. And it was interesting. We, um, when we started building our greenhouses, we have two indoor greenhouses. They're about 3,000 square foot each. Wow. And when we first built them, we had a contract with a company that was going to do this for us. But then, of course, everything shut down. Yeah. So now it's us doing it by hand, literally holding the post, having the kids help, and we are yeah. all in there. So I think in a way it kind of was beneficial because now it really like was ours. It was our project, yeah. our baby. We all worked together as a family to really build this business together. Um, What really brought us into it, really interesting, five years ago, I had a conversation with my husband, and I remember I was an assistant principal at the time, and he had gone to a party or something, and I remember, I think I found um, like a pre-roll or something he had, and Mm -hmm. this was five years ago, so we weren't legal in Texas at the time, and I got into the worst argument with him. You're not bringing this in my house. What are you doing? You know, and just all of it, just the biggest, one of the biggest arguments we ever had. Because I grew up during the drug war in the 80s. I was a teacher. I was an administrator. I was preaching all of those things as well. You don't do it. There's no reason. You know, just all of those stigmas and things that we think about, Mm -hmm. that was all part of my thought process. But then uh, something happened. In 2018, I started to develop some health problems myself in the sense that I developed early onset perimenopause. I was 38, 39, and didn't know what was happening. I started developing these really bad migraines, you know, all kinds of issues. And during that time, I was going through a lot. And doctors, because everybody was trying to figure out, you're too young. There's no way you're going through this. And so it was a journey. And interestingly, I found CBD started hitting the market in 2018 after the federal hemp bill passed. And I started to look into it. My husband's like, I think you should try this. I know what your thoughts are about cannabis, but I really think you should do your own research and (laughs) kind of think about it. So I did. I started um, using some CBD products and really understood and did my own research. And 
truly had to realize that it was a stigma. There was a lot of miseducation because of it. And so it took a lot. And when my husband just said, hey, this farm bill's coming, he got to be part of the process with some of the lobbyists. And he's like, I think we should, crazy idea. How about we just quit our jobs, pull our retirement and start this business? And I was all for it. I was just like, okay, this is an amazing, amazing product. We need to get out there. We need to spread the word. So that's really how Oak Cliff Cultivators came to be. Mm -hmm. And I like to say that we are kind of bringing a farm to table concept in regards to hemp. We grow the hemp. We manufacture a lot of our products. And those that we don't manufacture, we partner with a great Texas-based company that we use. And we bring those to table. And so that's kind of our whole idea is to bring a really great trusted brand to all of the people who need some empowerment in regards to their health and wellness. Yeah, that's awesome. I am in the same boat with you with the whole like uh, drug stigma and growing up in the, or kind of, I was born in the eighties, but you know, that whole, and being a nurse, that whole stigma against cannabis and that it's bad for you. It's a gateway drug. Um, But looking into it, you know, a couple of years ago, I started really looking into it and it's, all falls. It is. You know, there's not really any addictive properties to cannabis, especially CBD and everything. And there's more health benefits to it than, you know, is advertised. There's such that bad stigma against it. Um, And so tell us a little bit more about um, kind of the benefits that you saw with going through pre-menopause and everything. Because I know, you know, looking at the research with cannabis and CBD, it can help decrease your cortisol levels and help with different things. What did you see personally? For sure. So that's, that was exactly my journey. So I'm 38 years old. I'm developing migraines I'd never had my whole life. I started having developed a debilitating cramps that I had never had. I mean, I'd had cramps as a, you know, growing, going through it, but not like this, not yeah. to where I couldn't stand. I started noticing that I was having mood swings. I started noticing that I was getting depressed. I found myself getting depressed. I was having insomnia, which I knew all of these things were affecting one was affecting everything else. And so I was going to the doctors, doing all the right things. They had me do all kinds of testing because one of the things they kept saying is, there's no way you're too young. You know, this is interesting and your estrogen levels are so low. And Mm -hmm. so it was all this. So it was, here's this prescription for insomnia. Here's Mm -hmm. this prescription for migraines. Here's this prescription. And I'm like, there has to be a different path. And then it was hormone therapy discussions and it was all this. And I'm like, I'm 30. And at this point now I'm 39. I don't want to be on this for the rest of my life. There has to be another way. There has to be. And I remember that's when Eddie was saying, you know, the farm bill passed in 18. And so he said, Hey, look, you maybe look into this and he knows because I'm an educator. He knows I like to do the research. I'm I'm a research nerd. I love to do those things. And so I said, let me, let me look into this myself. Mm -hmm. So I started to really study. And when I started doing the research, it went all the way back to what caused prohibition. Mm -hmm. Why did we have it? Um, And it was just really interesting when you start diving into the history. But where I really, really enjoyed and found myself passionate was understanding the cannabinoids and the terpenes and how they work with your endocannabinoid system Mm -hmm. and really understanding where THC plays a role in your Mm -hmm. health and wellness and where all of these things kind of mesh together. So when I started to look into that, something that I started doing first and foremost is kind of my first step was a tincture. Mm -hmm. I started with a very low dose tincture and really found that my, as long as it was a thousand milligrams or higher, I was really starting to see some results, but it took time. It took everyone's endocannabinoid system is different. Mm -hmm. So it was one of those micro steps. I I started with like a 500 milligram and then I kind of kept going up. And when I got to about the 12,000 to 1200 milligram tinctures, I went two months and realized I didn't have a migraine or if I felt it, it was like a numbing, like it just kind of felt the pressure behind the neck, but it Mm -hmm. wasn't really what it was having before. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, Oh my God, this is amazing. So then let's start looking into other products and, you know, is there anything for sleep? So started learning about CBN and what that Mm -hmm. looks like and just how those cannabinoids work. So I started to realize that just through a little bit of research, breaking down everything I had been taught, I started to realize that I could really take this back and I didn't need all those other things. Now, yeah. are those prescriptions there for a reason? Yes, they are. But oh, yeah. how about not try, let's try this way first. And if it doesn't work, then we'll go the other route. And now I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm 43. 
no prescription medication. I'm just doing regular CBD products. Mm -hmm. For me, CBD works. I don't need a lot of THC. I feel like I'm a little THC sensitive. So for me, CBD products have worked wonders for me. I see I have better sleep, my mood, you know, all of it is being affected. Mm -hmm. And it was because that that cortisol level was lowering. My yeah. estrogen was able to kind of increase. So it was really interesting to even see the data in regards to the blood work. So as they wow. were doing blood work, my estrogen was so low. And as I started using CBD more and more and more, mm -hmm. I was doing a lot of blood work throughout. And you could just see my estrogen rising. And it was very interesting to see that balance. And for me, it was proof that this is something that's working. Yeah. So I started to incorporate different products, you know, teas and kind of really understanding what that all look like gummies and different things and now I'm like all about it like let's do it let's talk about it I still think that you know CBD in general has a lot of misunderstanding out there and we got to really take time especially when you're an owner of a store or, an, or part of the CBD companies you need to take time to educate and understand that it's not a one-size-fits-all, but let's talk about what your needs are and let's help point you in that right direction. Um, and the only way to do that is to understand the plant and yes. understanding the plant itself. Like, what is the plant? What are the different types of genetics that are out there? How do those cannabinoids work? So it's really taking time to educate, which is what I love most about yes. this. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you and education, your education background and everything. It's huge, and that's what we see a lot of with our customers customers education is so important and everything and uh, you had mentioned about the CBD um, and different types of cannabinoids lowering your cortisol levels and how that indirectly you know affected your estrogen levels to come up right and everything that's awesome um, and I know with your company with Oak Cliff Cultivators you have the CBG rich tincture we and do. everything tell we us do. more about that yes. I know about it but. yeah <laughs> so when I was doing my research and really understanding the cannabinoids it really came down to three major cannabinoids mm -hmm. so first is CBG then CBD than THC. And what I didn't realize in getting into the industry, I didn't know what CBG was. I thought, what is this? This is some made up cannabinoid. But as you started really understanding the plant and the dynamic, CBG is going to be the first molecule really created in this plant. It's going to be the very first one. And with time and with temperature, that CBG changes and it changes into a D, mm -hmm. the D changes and that becomes THC. So what we're noticing and we're, what was happening is you would have a lot of these genetics were you were losing so much of the G and so we weren't really understanding what that meant. Mm -hmm. But as we started to really understand the power of CBG in regards to research and um, as, you know, states started legalizing and are able to now really understand these plants and get dived deeper into them, we realized the health benefits of CBG. Uh, one of the things that we love about CBG is a lot of time that's going to be present in the plant before there's any THC. So now you're, when we're talking about people who are concerned about THC in their products, if you have a CBG rich product, more than likely it's going to have little to no THC in the product. Mm -hmm. It's going to focus completely on the health and wellness side. Mm -hmm. CBG is really great for many, many things, but some of the great research coming out right now, um, which is really interesting to me, is they're using it, my favorite research right now, is they're using it to, um, they think it can help reverse some memory issues, so like stay, kind of hold off dementia, mm -hmm. really slow down the process of Alzheimer's. They're seeing it kind of regenerate new cells, which I think is amazing. But if you think about it, part of the stigma of THC is that you're going to forget everything. You're not going to, you know, that you're yeah. lazy, that you're all these things, but CBG is kind of opposite to that. Yeah. They're seeing CBG give great energy to people. They're seeing CBG as a great, I always think of it as more internal, more um, organ based. So you, CBG, for example, they they use it a lot for IBS, so irritable bowel syndrome. They say it keeps your gut nice and healthy, kind of like a probiotic would. It's really great for increasing appetite for those who are having, for whatever reason, appetite issues. Um, we had someone recently who was going through cancer and, and chemo, and they were just had a loss of appetite they weren't eating. And so we kept saying, hey, try some of these CBG products. And they were very concerned about having THC yeah. mixing with anything. So we were like, try CBG. This is a really good cannabinoid that I think you would find some great benefits for. So it's just really understanding. So for me, CBG is going to be overall health and wellness. It's going to be great for the body from the inside out. Mm -hmm. So we're thinking larger organs, redeveloping new blood cells, 
Um, and that CBG is going to be before THC is present. So if there's hesitation with THC being in a product, I always recommend using some type of a CBG product. Mm -hmm. But CBG also is great for inflammation. It's going to be great for arthritis, for bones, keeps those bones nice and healthy, which for women, when we're going through menopause, we're worried about osteoporosis. So here's another great benefit to that. So CBG is a very powerful cannabinoid a lot of people don't really know about. Mm -hmm. Um, But to me, it's one of my favorites. I I feel like it's going to be my overall health and wellness, where for me, CBD and THC are more for a different acute issues. CBD is just going to be a great overall. You kind of want to cover all your bases, you know. Um, THC is going to be really great. You need THC for certain things. You need THC for pain. You know, it's going to be great for pain. It's great for the nervous system. Um, We're seeing great benefits, and you guys know probably from epilepsy and different Mm -hmm disorders, neurological disorders. Um, but the debate becomes how much THC, because what we get a lot of clients is I don't like the way I feel on it. I feel like it's causing all these other issues, um, you know, with too much THC paranoia and different, um, psychoactive effects. And so it's educating. How about you? You don't need that much THC. Try more of a high rich CBD product. Mm -hmm. It's all about the balance because what you really got to think about is what is the natural process of the plant. Sometimes we're getting too far removed from that process. We're finding products that are so high in THC or no other cannabinoids present, but there is a reason why that plant has all those cannabinoids. It's to keep a nice balance, mm-hmm. keeps the body in a nice homeostasis place. So it's all about having those great discussions with anyone who walks through or co- walks through your doors or walks up to our booth to talk to us about our products. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and I know you have a um, a strain of flower that is high naturally in CBG. Yes. So yeah. right now, what we have available is CBG Ice Number no. Nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was our four time award winner, which we were so excited about. Um, even be- one of the highest is CBG. This time around, we're growing one called CBG Matterhorn, and that okay. one will actually be ready at the end of June. So we're super excited about it. Um, and we're kind of going to see, we, we kind of like to keep it new. And so we mm-hmm. love CBG. We don't want to ever move away from that, but we wanted to try a different genetic. We, um, sampled some different products, uh, from where we, we got our seeds from. And so we really enjoyed it. We think it's going to be a great flower and it's growing. It's almost there. So we're really excited to see what it'll bring to the table. But CBG is one we have to always have yeah. available. Yeah. That's awesome. So Martha, I wanted to ask you, yes. um, I have some questions in front of me, but sure. I, the thing that keeps jumping out at me is because of your education background, um, and I just want to glean from you because I kind of want to cheat off of what you're doing, sure. what creative ways have you found to educate the public on, you know, because like Nicole said, and like you said, same with me, stigma, grew up super religious, you know, you, you can't do anything with that, and I remember when I first got this job, Uh, Josh and Nicole both asked me, uh, would you be okay selling this? And Mm -hmm. I was like, at that point, I I was like, I don't care. Right. But then (laughs) I did the research and then I started using the products because they first gave it to me for back pain. Right. And uh, it took a while. Like you said, it builds up in your system, Mm -hmm. but then it worked. Right. And then I was sold. Right. What creative ways, as I stated before, have you been able to reach, you know, the masses? Sure. So um, a couple of different things. I would say first and foremost is doing things like you guys are doing, having a podcast regularly, um, really bringing that back. And I love tying it into other pieces. So one of our biggest things is we like to partner with the right people, meaning I love to work with people who have a health background. I I love that because if they see what's happening in emergency rooms every day and they know the power of this natural product. So I love that partnering in those ways. For us, for me, being in an education background, I wanted to partner with people outside the industry. So for example, uh, we've partnered with the bookstore in our local neighborhood where we're doing educational series. (laughs) And I've worked with the bookstore to curate different books that will help break the stigma. And it's interesting because my friend, her name's Claudia. She's the owner of the bookstore. And we actually were not friends. We didn't know each other until I walked in her bookstore one day. And she's right down the street from where we live. I could walk to her bookstore. And I just kind of told her what we were doing. I told her who we were. 
and just said, you know, would you be willing? She was a brand new store. She had just opened, uh, I want to say she opened in December of this past year. And I said, would you be willing to carry some cannabis product or I'm sorry, books? And she said, yeah, if you give me some great titles, we're open to that. So I started sharing different titles, things that I used for my own personal research. Then we started talking about, I said, hey, would you let me host some classes here where I can start helping break some of those stigmas down? And so we started doing a three-part series. We did two focused on women in particular. Um, and we had some nurses from Houston come and kind of talk about sexual wellness. But then I also did one just on a, like a basic CBD 101. Yeah. But then we also had my husband come in and teach a grower's course awesome. for those who wanted to learn how to grow within their home. And mm-hmm. that's the number one question. Can we grow in our home? Yeah, you actually can. But there's some compliance and things that you have sure. to understand before you take that step. So we kind of, he talked that course. And so it's kind of trying to find these authentic ways to reach our community. Not only that, but then it's, okay, well, other than these things, what are some other things we can do? I try to volunteer as much as, as possible. So I volunteer at my kid's school one full day a week. And while through that process, I'm talking to teachers, I'm talking to other parents, and it's kind of like, then you start spreading the word. I walk in with my Oak Cliff shirt, people are kind of like, hey, what's that about? Um, and just kind of being involved because we have such a stigma around cannabis mm-hmm. that it's going to make you lazy, you're uneducated, you know, you're all these things. And so when they start talking to me and they're like, you're volunteer, what do you do? You own a cannabis company and you're, you know, you're a mom and you're here, <laughs> you know? So like, what is that about? Um, and so you kind of start teaching them. And it really is going to be teaching one person at a time yeah. in many cases because it has to be based on what their needs are yeah. to really help target them in the right direction. So other than that, I would say so, but, you know, partnering with people outside the cannabis industry, health and wellness type stuff or, or bookstores, but also even just your social media. You know, social media should be 80% education, in my opinion, um, and 20% about sales and things that your store does. But if you focus more on the education piece and the masses are going to be willing to pay attention to it a little bit more. So kind of using that as your big education platform. For, for, my, for our clientele, we always try to keep it as basic as possible, you know, with the visual with two or three things that they can expect from this product. You know, this is going to help you with relaxation, focus, whatever that might be, because we have so much we're trying to remember every day. So it's kind of like, give me two or three main things here. (laughs) What is this going to help me with? Um, And I think just kind of really like for us at Oak Cliff, you know, we had a lot of issues. We grew up in a a very... um, impoverished area back in the day Oak Cliff in the 90s was not what it is now Mm -hmm. it was you know we had a lot of gangs we had a lot of other issues going on we had a lot of things where our family members were being incarcerated for um, drug possession or distribution of marijuana my father-in-law being one of them he was incarcerated for about 10 years for distribution of marijuana and it broke my husband's family completely apart so when we started this industry, the first person we had to educate was going to be my mother-in-law. She was the very first one because in her mind, this plant destroyed her whole family. Yeah. And so she didn't want anything to do with it. And um, thankfully, she and I have this beautiful relationship. And I remember my husband saying, like, you're going to have to talk to her because she trusts you. <laughs> and she knows you would never do anything yeah. um, to harm our family. So it was teaching her. Then it was teaching my mom. Then it was teaching his grandma. And just kind of going and getting them to try the products. And then them being testimonials back, you yeah. know. And so it really, to me, is educate those people that walk in front of you every day, including your friends and family. Yeah. Start there. With every person who walks in the door, everyone needs to be treated individually. And then with the masses, partner with great community representatives, show your presence, be present, show that we can, we're not what you think we are. We're not just these baked people all day that are lazy doing nothing, but we're out and we're serving in our communities and we're helping in some way. We're giving back. For us, it's partnering with, you know, nonprofits like the Last Prisoners Project, things like that to really give back to the community that's supporting us, Um, being at your local schools. My favorite is uh, when my kids go to school, first thing I do when I go meet the teachers, I tell them what I do because I learned right away when we started this this business in 2020, our kids were virtual. And there was a day that we were growing our plants, they were growing, and my son, I was like, where's my son? I don't know where he's at. Well, he was actually taking the camera and his laptop and showing everybody the plants. 
So then I had got a call from the teacher like, hey, <laughs> wait a minute, you know? So I realized right away, like, oh, no. I mean, it was like, wait, your son just showed us these plants. Where are y'all? You know, like, what is happening here? And he's showing the kids who are showing their parent, and it just became a thing. So now it was like... Hey, my name is Martha Velez. This is my kid, and I'm a I'm a hemp farmer. And yeah. here's what we do. Yeah. Um, and I remember when I first started emailing, my tagline has my my logo with my flower, you know, my my marijuana leaf on there. Yeah. And I used to erase it. And then I'm like, no, I'm breaking a stigma. I'm going to leave it on there, right. you know, and that way they can start seeing that because even just that leaf is like so powerful to people. They see it and they're like, oh, you know, no, I, I don't know. want anything to do with this. Yeah. So it's starting all those small things. It's just small things that will make a big difference. Yeah. And I think it's so interesting um, because you mentioned about family, and I think that's the most important place to go first. Yes. Family, friends, secondly. But that was one of the things when I first started, you know, working here was talking to my children and letting them know, hey, this is what I do. I believe in it 100%. Right. And when they hear that then all of a sudden all the negativity that they've heard yeah growing up just drops like yeah. oh wow look it's helping dad get sleep at night because i have insomnia right right so if i don't use something i don't sleep right right and then it re- started fixing a whole lot of other of things course. that i didn't even know i struggled with yeah so yeah that's that's a huge thing but um and you know nathan something you're saying that i try to bring up at any t- session i teach is how do you talk to kids yeah. Um, I think that's the biggest and most powerful. How do I tell my kids that I'm using this product? How do I yeah. explain it to them, especially my teenage, if I have teenagers, you know, for me, I have younger kids, but our family members have teenagers and they're like, I've been telling them all these years that this is a bad thing and now I'm using it. How do I justify <laughs> that? Right. How do I not become a hypocrite? And so there's a lot of conversations I have with mothers Mm -hmm. at my events or family members about here's how you explain that. Um, For our kids, it was a little easier because they see the plant. They see us grow the plant. They understand and mommy's teaching them about this plant as the seeds are and they're seeing the roots and they're watching this, but not everybody has that. So for them, they know it's a natural process and it's a plant that helps people get better. Um, so what's interesting is my kids were this past year, um, drug free week, they saw a couple images of marijuana and my daughter's sick. She's in kinder. She's like, mommy, I want to wear my Oak Cliff shirt and tell them this is not a bad plant. You know? And I'm like, well, baby, you can talk about it, but let's not wear the shirt. You know, like let's kind of (laughs) be respectful on that piece. Um, but you talk to your teacher about it if you want. Um, but you know, just having conversations and saying, you know what? People do educate and say that this is a bad thing. And here's why they say it's a bad thing. But here's really what the truth is. And I tell my kids, like, and the way I explained it to them is, if you drank, you know, 12 Pepsis, your stomach's going to hurt. Anything you have too much of is not a good thing. And it's all about understanding the good, the bad, and how to use it and be responsible in its use with alcohol, with anything else. And so we kind of see it in that way. That it's a product that shouldn't be abused, but young done well will be a great, give you great benefits. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. That, those were awesome answers. <laughs> um, I so love that. What, because uh, <laughs> you were talking about, you know, your health journey. What, what is your definition of a healthy life? Interesting. So I see um, health, uh, being a teacher, um, I see it in three tiers. I see our tier one, our first step, is going to be the things that 100% of people can benefit from. And so for me, that's going to be exercise, good sleep, diet, all of those great things, self-care. And for me, self-care is meditation, understanding what's pleasurable to you and doing that and feeling okay with that. Even if it's having one cup of coffee in silence, you know, whatever that pleasure is to me, that's your tier one. That is your first step. These, this, this, anyone and a hundred percent of people can benefit from it. But then sometimes there's variables that affect that. There might be issues with, you know, sleep, with hormones, whatever that's affecting my ability to be able to get that good night's sleep or the pain is not allowing me to do this. So now we're going to this tier two level where we need to take back our empowerment and try to find natural remedies instead of jumping first into a prescription medication. What are some natural things that I can do to help? So now I'm having an issue with sleep. Can I take some teas? Can I try a hemp product? You know, what can I try 
before I go to that next tier. And for me, that tier three is going to be the most restrictive. And that's, yes, now I've tried all these other things. I've tried exercise. I've tried diet. I've, I've tried all these things, and I still can't get where I need to go. So now I need help, and now I'm going to need professional help, and maybe now I do need a prescription. Um, but having conversations and being willing to try other things before that, um, for me, I wish our medical professionals were more, and I know there's a lot of red tape for them too. Right. They can't. But I really do wish, and one thing I suggest always is talk to your doctor about it. I, I know I do. I walked in and told my doctor, I'm a hemp farmer, and this is what I do, and this is what I believe, and this is what cannabinoids are. And she sat there and just said, you know, all of that and my own research is great, and I wish I could tell my clients that. But because my hands are tied, I can't always do that. Mm-hmm. So it's always asking, what can I do to stop this? What can I do before I get to that prescription medication? Right. Do you have any suggestions? Have you heard about CBD? You know, think, what are your views on CBD? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I know that's one big thing for us is we can never make a health claim because we don't always know the variables in the background, right. you know, so ha- talking to a medical professional, but be willing to ask them about it because sometimes they can't bring it up first yeah. and yeah. foremost. So that's good. That's so good. Um, and I just love that, you know, with your background and education and then just that all that brings to the clients. Um, but what, and I know everybody's different. Everybody mm-hmm. has different things going on with their life and their health. But what's something maybe um, our listeners and viewers could do every day to kind of improve the quality of their health? Like with CBD or cannabis, yeah. maybe a little trick or tip. That yeah. Give them. So for me, anyone who walks up, you know, of course, I always say the diet, the you know, exercise, all those are great. But if you're looking for something else, if there's another issue and you want to try a natural way first, exact biggest one for us is sleep or, you know, pain, yeah. uh, migraines, things like that. But sleep is a big one. Sleep, sleep is huge because sleep can affect so many other things, right? Mm-hmm. It affects everything. Um, so we have a lot of clients that are like, I'm, I'm at this place and I just, I can't sleep. Do you have a great product? Um, what I always tell people is if it's your first time, you don't know where to start. A really good tincture is a great way to start. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's because it's a little safer sometimes than other things. It depends on what your body. So for example, when I think I love gummies, gummies for me is how I sleep at night. But some people can't have sugar, so it depends on the gummy, right? It just kind of depends. For me, a tincture is kind of a great way to start your journey and see how you always tell people be body conscious. How do you feel? Notate it. Journal it. You know, I'm a big proponent of journaling. Journal how you feel. Give it a couple weeks and see and kind of reflect back. Because like Nathan and I, and I were saying earlier, for me, it was one of those things where I was like, wow, I haven't had a migraine in, in four weeks or six weeks. And oh my gosh, I didn't even realize that I didn't have that. Oh, I, now I'm realizing I'm having great night's sleep, you know, and it's kind of this, oh, wait, I'm just noticing because you start feeling good and you're not really understanding. So really being conscious of that. Um, but I always recommend when someone walks up and they've never tried any type of CBD product, I do usually talk to them about a tincture first. And then for from there, I, you know, then we can go in other avenues, depending on what their needs are. Um, sometimes I, you know, I do say, do you prefer a, to consume it, to smoke it? Do you have a preference? Uh, and then kind of go from there. But I think the tincture is one of the safest, quickest ways to just kind of get introduced to cannabis in general. But understand what tincture you're taking, you yeah. know. Um, is it a trusted product? Is it tested Who's making it? You know, all those great things. Um, The store you walk into is going to be huge. If you're walking into a store that's in a gas station, it's going to be a little different than if you came to Lone Star Naturals where it looks like a health and wellness. There's people who's educated about the product. Mm -hmm. Um, That's a very big difference. So I always tell people, even if you don't buy it from me, Make sure you're going to a reputable place and make sure they know about the product. Ask them questions. Where did this tincture come from? You know, what kind of cannabinoids are in there? If they can't answer those questions, then you don't need to buy that product because it's very important to ensure it's a safe product that you're trying. So true. It's so true. You definitely want to know what is in your product that you're consuming. That's huge. Yes. (laughs) And that's a big thing for us. Like when we were looking for manufacturers, I'm really big about if I can't use the product, I don't want to sell the product. Yeah. And if I can't trust where that's coming from, I don't want to sell it. Yeah. And so we found ourselves in a business place right now recently with manufacturing costs going up just because of everything. Do we stay with our manufacturer who we know has an amazing product and we love the way that they extract 
ethically they are doing the best they we use a rosin press so we're pressing our flour and we get this nice sticky sap looking it's like molasses and you scrape it off and you use that to make the product Mm -hmm. that is full plant integrity going into a great gumdrop yeah or do we go the cheaper route and use ethanol co2 or some other form and maybe the, the 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 quality is a little different right so where do you do you do that you can create a lower cost product but is it going to be what is the integrity and I just can't I'm just like no I know this is a great way to manufacture I can't cut corners when I know that this is going to be a great product for me and for Eddie we believe in whole plant integrity and so for us the rosin press is like the best way to manufacture but it's not going to be the most cost effective, but it's going to be a great quality product. So it's kind of finding the balance and making Mm -hmm. sure that whatever you have, it's going to be high in integrity and quality. So making sure you find a great, reliable company to work with. Yeah. And y'all's products are very high quality. (laughs) We, they sell so well at the store, (laughs) the flour, the tincture, every, and the gummies. The gummies. (laughs) Our gummies are like number one. Yeah. yeah. That is our number one seller for sure. It's like, give me more, you know, like, (laughs) okay, calm down. Let's do microdosing. Yeah. But yeah, it's a great product for sure. Oh, my final question for you. If you could meet one person dead or alive, not you being dead or alive. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Who would it be and why? Oh, that's that's a good question. That's a challenge. You're I really making could, me think. I wish I could take credit for coming up with that one. That was the boss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Let's see. Man, I feel like there's all these great ones that I should I should be saying. But you know what? And I'm going to kind of be open here. Um, I would love to meet my grandmother. I never met her. So she was my Aww. mom's mom. Um, she died when my mom was very young and a lot happened in my mom's life because of that one event, but I wish I would have known her. I feel like based on what I've known about her, what I've been told, the stories I've been told, I feel like maybe she and I were very much the same, even the way in which the way we look and all kinds of things. And so I would have loved to get to know her personality, but I also would have loved to get to know my mom. And I feel like I know her but I don't know her as like what she was as a child and all of those things. And I think she had to grow up really fast because of that event. So had she been around, I wonder what she would have been like. Like, it's just a lot. Like for me, that's what I always think about. Like, I wish I could have known her. I just, my mom talks about her. She part of my whole life. I just never got to meet her. So I wish I would have gotten to meet her and really relate to who is this woman that I supposedly look like. And my personality seems to mimic wish I would have gotten to know her. So that's the one I'm thinking about the most. Great answer. Oh, I love that. Um, So tell us how we find out more about Oak Cliff Cultivators and your business on the web and on the socials and everything. Yeah. So first and foremost, you could come to Lone Star Naturals and find the products here. And you guys (laughs) know how to get a hold of us if needed. Um, But also, you know, just finding us on Instagram. We're more, we're present on both, but I would say we're more active on Instagram. So Oak Cliff Cultivators is our our handle. Um, Our website, Oak Cliff Cultivators. Cultivators.com is another one. And if you wanted to email, it'd be info at oakcliffcultivators.com. So all of those avenues, we're pretty easy to find. Um, You know, just kind of connect with us and we love to to hear from you guys. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you, Martha, for being on the podcast. I'm super excited about the new genetics that are coming out Yeah, we'll have four (laughs) new ones. So I'm excited about them too. Yes. Well, thank you. Y'all have a great day. Sounds good. Thank you. (laughs) 